Welcome to the MEM Computing Technology Overview. We owe modern computers to Alan Turing, an English mathematician and one of the world's earliest computer scientists. Alan Turing invented the bomb machine, which the Allies used to decrypt German cryptography during World War II. Most importantly, Alan Turing developed the concept of the Turing machine. This became the basis for computers as we know them today. John von Neumann was a peer of Alan Turing during the earliest and most influential stages in the development of what became our modern computer. John von Neumann developed a realization of a Turing machine with his von Neumann architecture. What you will notice is that the central processing unit, or CPU, is separate from the memory unit. Now, keep this all in mind because we're going to introduce MEM computing and we'll point out the differences and advantages. MEM computing was invented by doctors Fabio Traversa and Max de Ventra, two theoretical physicists with a background in unconventional computing methods. Working together at the University of California, San Diego, they set out to develop a new computing architecture that would overcome the inefficiencies associated with the von Neumann architecture and would more closely resemble quantum computing from a performance perspective without the quantum computing overhead. In computer science, it's well known that our computers face a problem known as the von Neumann bottleneck. Recall that the memory and CPU are separated from one another in the von Neumann architecture. This separation results in a significant communication overhead, where the CPU must continually push and pull data from memory. For the most complex computations that industry faces, this bottleneck causes computational time to grow exponentially, while the input variables may only be growing one at a time. Traversa and Deventra began with what might be considered a simple concept. They presented an entirely new computing architecture where memory and compute are combined. The key aspect to the MEM computing architecture is driven by their specialized concept of computational memory. Over the next few years, Traversa and Deventra set out to realize this new MEM computing architecture. Through trial and error, they developed all of the mathematics required. They discovered breakthroughs that leveraged aspects of classical physics that had previously been ignored. With this, they invented a new computing architecture made up of computational memory. That is, memory that performs both the tasks of storing and processing of information. Patented and implemented as a software-as-a-service platform, MEM computing is the next generation of computational technology proven to solve today's hardest problems in orders of magnitude faster while increasing the quality and accuracy. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back and explain how the technology works. Let's talk for a second about how conventional logic circuits work. Take for an example an AND gate. Data enters an AND gate through the input terminals. The output is determined based upon the truth table associated with an AND gate and set to the output terminal. A logic circuit starts to come together by combining multiple logic gates. Data are fed into input terminals of the circuit, resulting in several outputs. This output feeds the input of the next stage of the computation, and so on. This continues through the circuit, presenting the result through the output at the end of the circuit. This is a simple but accurate representation of how an algorithm is solved using a standard Boolean circuit. MEM computing changes this paradigm, and instead of using conventional passive logic gates, we introduce the idea of self-organizing logic gates, SOLG. SOLGs are terminal agnostic. That is, an SOLG accepts both input and output from any terminal. All terminals work together to self-organize and satisfy the expected logic condition for the gate. Inside the SOLG, you'll also note that each terminal has an associated dynamic correction module, or a DCM. Let's assume that we have the following values associated with an SOLG where there is a 1 and a 0 at the traditional input terminals and a 1 at the traditional output terminal. The DCMs recognize that this is not logically acceptable. The DCMs immediately activate, and the DCM on the upper right terminal will try to raise the voltage from a 0 to a 1. The DCM on the bottom terminal will also try to lower the voltage from 1 to 0. Note that these voltages are transmitting to the other self-organizing logic gates connected to these terminals. This becomes a process of negotiation where all of the SOLGs work together to find a set of values that reach an equilibrium and where all SOLGs are logically satisfied. A self-organizing logic circuit, or an SOLC, is created by building a network of SOLGs. Because all terminals accept input and output, 
Therefore, unlike standard logic circuits, there is no restriction where the inputs are fed into a self-organizing logic circuit. Since SOLGs are active, the SOLGs immediately begin to negotiate with each other and naturally self-organize, satisfying all gates. In physics, this self-organizing negotiation drives to the lowest point of energy where all gates are satisfied. When this equilibrium is reached, the output of the circuit, i.e., the results of the computation, can then be read. This cooperative, self-organizing form of computation is known as intrinsic parallelism. Intrinsic parallelism is part of the magic of MEM computing. Each SOLG knows what the other SOLGs are doing, and each changes their logic state according to the state of the others at virtually the same time. This is completely different than the standard parallelism of current computers where each CPU works independently of the other parallel CPUs during a clock cycle. The CPUs communicate only at the end of each clock cycle, but not communicate during the clock cycle. MEM computing circuits are parallel in the true sense of the word. They are always communicating. MEM computing circuits work on a problem in a truly distributed manner. Each gate, that is, each SOLG within the circuit, is constantly aware of every other SOLG in the circuit, regardless of how distant one SOLG may be from another. Okay, let's get a little deeper. In this diagram, we show the correlations between voltages at different positions of the self-organizing logic circuit at an instant in time when the voltages show peaks. The voltage peaks are what we call instantons, and the correlations do not decay at all across the entire circuit, except at the boundary where one inputs the signals and reads the output. These ideal scale-free correlations, that is, correlations that do not decay spatially, are reminiscent of quantum entanglement in which the dynamics of all particles in the system are correlated in the sense that they are intrinsically dependent on or associated to each other. The system is spatially non-local and rigid. While MEM computing is not a quantum solution, it demonstrates some properties like this that are similar to quantum computing. The key aspect is that MEM computing is available today and runs on standard hardware in a standard environment. There's no need to supercool a MEM computing machine to near absolute zero, nor do you have to place it in a vacuum stronger than space, as is required for a quantum computer. We are often asked whether the circuit will get stuck in local minima. The reason is that MEM computing self-organizing logic circuits are designed so that while solving an equation, they go through a succession of instantons. An instanton is a classical trajectory of the equations of motion of the SOLC that connects critical points in the phase space that have a certain number of unstable directions to critical points that have a smaller number of unstable directions. These points are also known as saddle points. That is, every time there's an instantonic jump, the circuit goes into a more stable state than before the jump, from one saddle point with some unstable directions to another with less unstable directions. This process is repeated by the MEM computing self-organizing logic circuit until the last jump. The last jump is to the equilibrium point where there are only stable directions, and this represents the solution of the problem. Perhaps in more simpler terms, the circuit always goes downhill toward the solution, jumping from one unstable state to another more stable state to another even more stable state, etc., until it reaches the most stable one, which is the solution of the problem. It cannot go uphill, only downhill. That is, it can never jump from one state to a less stable state. I think we took you about as deep as we should go. Let's start to wrap up by explaining how this amazing new technology is being applied today. Our MEM CPU XPC Software as a Service is being used by many companies in the Global 2000 to solve problems associated with computational chemistry, supply chain, transportation logistics, scheduling, and oil and gas exploration. The next slide helps you visualize how to apply the technology. As an example, let's take a common and very hard optimization problem, the traveling salesperson problem. This problem can be represented as a mathematical equation. To use the MEM CPU XPC SAS, the equation is sent in the form of a mathematical programming system file, also known as an MPS file. The MEM CPU XPC SAS creates a custom self organizing logic circuit that exactly represents the equations in the .MPS file. This process takes nanoseconds. Your custom SOLC then immediately executes, simulating the dynamics of circuit and then returns the solution of your problem. If you'd like to learn more, visit our website and read our white papers and publications proving the validity of our technology and its applications.